Hi everyone and welcome back to the Bitcoin Bridge, CoinGeek's show exclusively on Streamanity that looks at Bitcoin in the Asia Pacific or APAC region. Now today, since it's the getting close to the end of January and uh, pretty close to Australia Day, we thought we'd head on back down to Australia and we're going to talk to Dean Little and Nick Carton from BitPing. BitPing is a distributed network intelligence platform that monitors website traffic uh, performance issues. Um, I'm going to let them explain it to you. But anyway, here is Nick and Dean from BitPing. Okay, Dean and Nick from BitPing, welcome to the Bitcoin Bridge. Thanks for having us, John. Okay, mate. Uh, also, because this edition's coming out on the 25th or the 26th, I'm going to say Happy Australia Day. <laughs> happy Australia Day, mate. Happy Australia Day to you too. Do they uh, do they still celebrate that uh, in in Australia? I'm from Melbourne, and it was never really a thing. When I went to Sydney, they uh, they had the flags everywhere and the decorations everywhere. Do they still do that? I think it depends on where you're from. Like I I always went to the to the dam with my friends with the Australia Day flags and stuff like that, and you know we just have a swim and a and a bunch of beers, and you'd somehow try and figure out how to get home. So I think it's still going strong. Yeah, that sounds about accurate in my experience too. You should go have a few drinks with some mates. Whoever's got the pool, usually that's where you go, and um, have a barbie and yeah, try to find a way home. Yeah, generally. Have a barbie. Yeah. All right. I gotta. I gotta tell you. Feel free to use Australian English in this show because it is a special edition. Beautiful. No expletives, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> Within reason. <laughs> I think sometimes the Australians uh, might use expletives as punctuation or just without even noticing it. So, uh, yeah, very, yeah. very much. Absolutely. I, I don't notice at all. <laughs> and, and I wonder too, is there anyone in Bitcoin BSV these days who is offended by swearing? Because if they are, you know, they're going to have a rough time. <laughs> are you alluding to somebody? <laughs> I, I might be. I might be. Fair enough. A certain... Uh, Spiritual guide that uh, we have here at, uh, at Bitcoin by the name of Craig Wright. He, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't seem to shy away. <laughs> he doesn't. Not either. that I've, not that during his uh, presentations and stuff, you really, oh, well, I've really noticed. But uh, <laughs> I know that people that I've, I've been like, yeah, this guy's this guy could be Satoshi, and they're like, no, no, no he's too crude for that. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just think it's hilarious. Who else uses the Queen's English? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah well yeah. one thing i did want to ask you about australia like I, i'm from there but i haven't lived there for a long time it's probably been yeah. about two decades since i was last there and uh i think uh, when last time i was there though there wasn't a whole lot of technology compared to today there were no social networks there was no youtube uh, um that kind of thing I'm, I'm always a bit surprised when i go back there and i i see all that stuff you know they're like find us on twitter like ah, oh, they have Twitter in Australia now. <laughs> so, is do you think there is, a, as they say, like a tyranny of distance when you're a Bitcoin developer? I mean, I feel like you know we've just spent the last, I don't know, like bef before you know twelve months ago, we'd spent like the you know months and months just traveling, meeting all our friends, you know, Toronto. Korea, Cambrian in Bali, uh, London. London, you know, Twitch, Berlin, Cambrian in uh, uh, Lisbon, Portugal, so, yeah. you know, so we've, we've been traveling a lot because the Bitcoin community is very international. And um, I guess the last 12 months, it's been sort of difficult not being able to see like all of our friends. But um, at the same time, from a developer's perspective, you know, we're used to being in a room and just working away on stuff by ourselves and collaborating remotely. So, you know, I think um, in terms of Australia specifically, it's a positive thing that people are now finally adopting this kind of um, idea of, of remote working and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. It just means people get to spend more time with their families and, um, you know, doing more meaningful, happy things with their life. Yeah, that's true. I think also because there's such a big distance between places in Australia, Australia, like um, I think Dean and I are about two hours apart. And mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, there's some people in Sydney, but then, you know, 
you know, it gets even further than that and you sort of have to rely on like messaging apps or like discord or skype or something so that you can talk to each other and yeah. and uh, collaborate you know so it, it's pretty cool that it's it's a lot more uh, integrated now i feel uh and we've it's i think everyone's reacted pretty quickly to the uh to the distance that you know these lockdowns or covid has sort of put on us but um you know i think it's okay i think we've gotten used to it i mean we usually just jump on discord you know um yeah. jai jai is like four hours away from me i think three hours away from nick you know so it's mm. like we'll just jump on discord hash some things out and then get back to work yeah yeah for a lot of online workers we haven't noticed a whole lot of difference over the past year mm. yeah there... i mean it's mostly just like a pain in the ass trying to go to the gym or like get a beer or something right but like outside of that i mean it's kind of the year that everyone realized we were right <laughs> can you elaborate on that I... oh, just the idea of not going to an office necessarily yeah. and um, being productive in your own living space and having a better sort of work-life balance indeed yeah yeah well i mean i used to work in an i used to work in an office and when i started working on bitping i was like okay cool i'm gonna start actually um working from home and uh, investing some more time in my working space and and uh, some money and whatever uh and then you know pretty quickly after i went to working on on bitping it from home uh COVID hit and i'm like oh oh I, I guess i needed to do this anyway so i guess it's sort of good that i that i paid that cost up front happy accident yeah exactly so in normal times um it's hard to say what is normal times now uh Bitcoin as BSV has probably been around less than two years, so mm. it's a, it's hard to really gauge. But is there much of a you know a social scene or a developer scene in Australia? Uh, well, obviously a lot of really great developers coming out of Australia. I mean, I like to think that the Southern Hemisphere really does punch quite heavily above its weight in terms of representation. You know, if you if you want to tip on le- on. Uh, winning hackathons back to back, you know, call an Australian. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we, we've got some really great people. We've got, you know, uh, Coda in Sydney, as well as uh, Bitping. Um, we've got Metastream Weather SV. Uh, we've got Brendan from um, Elas, um, you know, Brad from Enchain. So obviously Shatters is from here. So we've got a lot of um, representation in the ecosystem for sure. Definitely more than more than we deserve, you know, so uh, there must be something to that. More than we deserve. <laughs> well, yeah. I was just thinking, uh, you know, if if there's any aspiring BSB developers who happen to be watching this show you know, in Australia, where where would be a good place to start? Is there like a, is there a chat group or, you know, should they just go to Twitter or something like that, Twitch? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would recommend there's a few groups. One would be um, first thing you should get on Twitch and just start asking questions there. But then also there's um, there's the Atlanta Slack, there's the Scrip Slack, there's um, uh, also um, you know some good resources on things like Run or whatever. Joshua Hensley's tutorial videos, um, yeah. You know, a lot of stuff like that. Unwriter stuff is pretty well documented. Matterpool stuff is pretty well documented. Um, so, yeah, definitely there's there's plenty of resources out there. Just just ask and people will help you. Yeah, or even in the or even in the Bitping Telegram, if you wanna uh, if you wanna ask any questions, we're always yeah. awake. And, and I guess it's also useful uh, to talk to someone who's awake in your time zone. So if you're in Australia, hit us up. Yeah, hit we'll us be, up. Uh, for we'll sure. be awake. Well, I mean, some of us might be awake. <laughs> Do you collaborate much with people in other you know parts of this same time zone, say Singapore, Hong Kong, China, Japan, that kind of thing? Uh, well, absolutely. I mean, um, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of my customers and my friends and stuff are scattered around sort of Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia, sort of thing. So, um, and uh, also, you know, got a lot of friends around there. You know, Jack in Hong Kong, Ella in Singapore. Mm. um you know so definitely 
And Dean, I, I know you in particular are pretty multilingual. Like you, I think you speak about five languages, many of them Asian. Yeah. Is there, is there anything you feel confident enough uh, saying in one of those languages as a greeting to all the Bitcoin Bridge viewers? Um, sure. Uh, what should sorry, I say? Sorry I to put know. you on the spot like that. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say, bro. Uh, sure. right. Thanks for watching Maybe. the Bitcoin Bridge. <laughs> we'll, say it. we'll say it at the end. <laughs> sure. All right, now uh, you did mention back-to-back uh, -back hackathon winners, and at Bitping, <laughs> you you actually won the first Bitcoin Association hackathon that was back in uh, around June or July 2019. Can you tell us a yeah. little bit more about that experience? You know, like how how you went entering the competition, who you encountered, you know, what sort of support they offered, that kind of thing. Yeah, so at that time, BSV was very, very sort of at its beginning um, in terms of developer and development tools and ecosystem and all of that. Um, so we mostly had to rely on ourselves, but there was a few people that, you know, provided some good feedback and stuff. So going into the hackathon, we, uh, we shortlisted about 20 ideas because we didn't know the question ahead of time. So I just sort of went, you know, war, war room, okay. If they ask us this, we do this. If they ask us this, we do this. So we made a bunch of ideas. And then when it came out that it was about onboarding, well, we picked the idea that had the best chance of putting Bitcoin in people's hands without them having to go through an exchange or do anything too difficult. Because um, we figured the more people who get Bitcoin, the more it can be used. And um, certainly that has been the case. And all of these use cases have emerged for people earning these small amounts of money, like you can post on Twitch or uh, you know, you can play on peer game or you can post something, you know, post an op return. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of little use cases that popped up as a result of that. Um, yeah. Did you two know each other before you started working on this? Oh, we'd met, we'd met, we'd met each other like yeah. once or twice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, cause I didn't join until I think it was, I think it was like maybe a month or two before Seoul, maybe. I think it was even like a week or two before Seoul. Well, yeah, like maybe. It wasn't, wasn't long before Seoul, yeah. Even um, that feels like a long time ago but now. We, 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 sorry? Yeah. Even that feels like a long time ago now. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I sort of can't, I can't imagine like a time before working on Bitping now, <laughs> considering how much, I, how much code <laughs> has just been popped out of my fingers. I definitely say it was a really it was a really positive experience though, mm -hmm. like being able to go to Toronto and meet all those people, like make friends. You know, we made we made friends there that you know we talk to every day now. We work with them, we collab on things, um, and definitely it helped us solve the problem that most startups end up having, which is like the chicken and egg problem, where you need customers to get users and you need users to get customers. So um, winning the hackathon definitely gave us that credibility that the ecosystem sort of trusted us and they were happy to sort of run our um, software. And uh, so that helped us get nodes online so that we could go and start selling to people. So it was hugely helpful from that perspective for us. Yeah, but also like the amount of customers that actually reached out to us, um, like after, I think, well, I can only really speak about Seoul and onwards, but um, like after we started like announcing features and like beta timelines and, and whatnot, yeah. like the amount of people that actually reached out were like, Hey, this is a really interesting idea. Uh, we'd really love to use your, use your tech. And we're like, sweet. That's pretty validating. So yeah, it's, it's been nice. Nice. All right. Well, let's talk about the tech. I, now I want to notice, uh, notice the fact that you're both wearing uptime SV t-shirts, but the company's actually called <laughs> BitPing. Who, who wants to explain that one? Well, we just figured that, you know, there were other people offering similar services going by the name Uptime, and we thought we'd pick a less litigious name that encapsulated the ideas of Bitcoin and pinging things. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, we haven't uh, got the new shirts that Jai printed for us yet, but... Um, yeah, we need to go pick yeah, them up. Yeah, need to go pick them up. Yeah. We've actually got... We've got some uh, we've got some bit pink jumpers, but it's a bit warm, bit too warm in Australia day to uh, to wear them right now. I could probably use one of those. <laughs> so anyway, Bitcoin and pinging things. I think that might be our short title there. 
<laughs> but let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about what BitPing actually does. So you, I think you described it as a uh, distributed network intelligence platform. Yeah. So um, we we've created a a bunch of little um, programs that you can install on your. It could be on your phone. It could be on your Raspberry Pi. It could be on your computer. It could be on your laptop. It really doesn't matter. And it will hook you up to our to our um, distributor layer, which mm-hmm. will make sure that you you receive jobs whenever someone's like, "Hey, I'd really like to know if this place in Thailand can access my website, or can they access my ISP? So from a specific ISP, um, or let's say, can they click through like the login page on my website, and we can tell you how long that how long that took." Um, or give you really detailed information on streaming, uh, on like your streaming service, like a Twitch or whatever, we can tell you, hey, these people can access your stream. These people are getting downgraded to a really low quality stream, or maybe some people can never keep up to your stream. You should probably investigate maybe a CDN or something like that. And based on this like uh, interesting information, based on all the, all the data that's coming in from all these places around the world, you can get some really deep tom- tomographical data. So you can actually understand how hops are going around the internet we can provide that to our to our customers um, for a fee that gets split with the nodes so as you run our software we will we, we split you um, the payment that a uh, that a customer that a customer pays us and we'll give you some for providing your CPU time to us or your internet time or you know yeah yeah it, it's uh, not necessarily a brand new idea entirely it's just that mm. generally these kinds of distributed computation systems are uh, malicious. So right. often people will be infected with viruses that use their computer to send emails or things like that. And um, what we want to do is, is uh, recognize the strengths of this distributed model, but do it in a legal, um, compliant and consensual fashion where uh, people download our, our software, they run it on their computer in the background, they earn money automatically, all they're doing is renting out their network and their computer, their compute to us. And um, yeah, and they, they can earn, you know, a bit of BSV uh, for, for running that. Um, and, and it's really, it's benefited the BSV ecosystem a lot. Like, for example, um, when Twitch was uh, coming into their current, um, like, you know, version one, um, which is, looks kind of similar to what you see today. Um, they use BitPing to A-B test their CDNs to see which CDN would load fastest. So, you know, if you think about how many users are on Twitch, we've probably saved, you know, thousands of hours of users' time just from that one thing. Or like mm. uh, Money Button, when they had outages, we monitored that. Um, when Relay was having DNS issues, we monitored that. Um, we also monitor um, the SDN and a, a bunch of nodes like that, um, just right. providing network intelligence for all of these things so that we can keep the internet online and um, keep things moving. Yeah, and it's all happening in real time too. You don't have to wait for the report to come in. Yeah, yeah you, can, right. uh, you can download all that information whenever you want. Yeah, and you can actually go into our dashboard as a customer and you can see oh, cool, there's a new person from Japan that's just sent back their report, uh, then Australia, then, you know, wherever else. And, yeah, you can collate all that information and chuck it into your analytical platforms or whatever you, whatever you need to do. Like you could, you could even say, hey, you know, I know that one part of my AWS infrastructure has gone down. You can redirect based on, it, uh, based on some bit ping information and you can redirect to it through a different part of the internet so that your uh, user's connection is never, is never disrupted. And just to be clear, yeah. uh, BitPing can monitor you know, network health for any kind of online service or app or uh, website. It doesn't have to be a Bitcoin-related service. Nope. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, absolutely. We can monitor just about anything. If we can't, you know, talk to us. I'm sure we'll figure it out because yeah, exactly. right. that's what we're here to do. Um, you know, so from from a user's perspective, it's you know, geo mining to make money. But from a customer's perspective, it's really a better alternative to Google or Amazon or any of those sort of more centralized services, because rather than being in the center of the network where everything is heavily connected and interconnected, you're at the edges of the network um, where things often get lost or go missing. And that's data that just simply isn't available through those traditional, more centralized providers. 
Yeah, and it, I mean, I, I've definitely had websites in the past that could have benefited from a bit ping. There's nothing like that feeling of waking up in the morning and uh, accessing the site and seeing it's just it's not loading. You've been DDoSed again. It's uh, mm, it's yeah. been bumped off for some other reason. You know, like I wish someone could have just thrown a glass of water on me while I was sleeping and let me know. <laughs> we could be that glass of water. True, true. I'll be a glass of water, mate. <laughs> So for for the average user, I should point out that anyone can actually become a node on this network. You don't have to be running a Bitcoin service. You don't have to be running an online service of any kind. You can just join in and be a node. Yeah, and yeah. it's super lightweight, so it doesn't take up all the yeah. resources that a running a Bitcoin node takes as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it's very low footprint. Like 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 Nick said, we, we made this run on a Raspberry Pi, you know. So if anyone is out there running a CASA node, just hmm. switch over to Bitping. You will make so much more money. <laughs> and you'll be doing uh, so much more good for the world too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I actually, uh, it's, as a test, I started up a, a Bitping node about three days ago and it's I think it's done about 4,000 tests so far. I haven't noticed any awesome. performance lag. It's, it's doing it as we speak. So if this video is coming out loud and clear, then um, it's, that's how it works. That's good. Well, we've got, you've got nodes and last we checked was like 71 countries, you know, right. so we've got people all around the world. We've got, you know, what, Tunisia, we got yeah, that just popped out. That was pretty South, awesome. South Africa, we got most of South America, um, most of Europe. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're just collecting rare flags at this point. <laughs> right. So have you got anything new coming up soon? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I'll announce the first thing, which is we've now got HLS monitors. Mm -hmm. um, by the time this video goes live, that will be out in production. So HLS monitors allow you to test the quality of live video streams. Um, this helps you to see whether your users are encountering buffering issues, what is the maximum quality of your video stream that they can load, um, just generally you know, debugging um, video stream performance issues. So you can imagine for something like um, live sports or uh, live betting, you know, horse races, that sort of thing, mm. where it's a really, um, where it's really, it's a really big problem if the stream degrades or goes down. Um, yeah. We can help those businesses keep their stream quality up and diagnose issues in real time. Pretty much um, any business with stream in the title. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I yeah, can't and, think of um, one off the top Nick of my head, to, but <laughs> I'll allow Nick to um, elaborate on the other thing that we're about to bring out. Yeah, Go cool. So we're um, we're also enabling users to provide like user experience monitoring, uh, which I think I mentioned before that allows users to um, or, or our customers to say, "Hey, I want to know if people in these countries can click on my login screen." Go provide. Uh, perform some actions, uh, let me know how long each of these actions takes, uh, do any of them fail, and provide us screenshots to know that, hey, this is precisely where something failed. And uh, through doing that, it actually streams the data uh, like as a proxy from a node, which basically allows any node to monetize their internet connection and, provide, and um, receive Bitcoin for that, which is, uh, it's a, it's a big thing that's been in the works for a while, but it allows us to really flexibly add a whole multitude of new test types. Yeah, so instead of just pinging or loading your website or your web service, we can essentially emulate real user actions. Like, And we can log in, we can perform these actions. And because it preserves SSL, you can also mm. use sensitive information like emails and passwords, So, which is the sort of thing that um, you know some people unable to provide through their services if they if they were to do this kind of model unless they uh, keep SSL intact. So it's really exciting what it what it unlocks for businesses. Right. Yeah. So are you going to increase the um, the feature list for the node operators as well? So maybe uh, pay them a little extra if they're going to do some real world tasks as you know, instead of just letting it run in the background. Is is that possible even? Yeah. yeah. So right right now we're we're focusing on automation mm -hmm. um, mostly. Uh, so these UX tests are done automatically in in the background, so like the user doesn't even notice it. Mm -hmm. um, we're basically just using their internet connection. 
uh, through a very complicated proxy setup that we wrote. But mm -hmm. um, so and so whenever like tests are more strenuous or more you know resource intensive, we we pay our nodes more, um, and we also charge more. Uh, but in the future, you know, it, it it's it's not beyond possibility that we could also offer our users non-automated stuff. The reason we like automation is because it's objective and you can get it any time of day. So imagine if we were actually calling someone right now in, say, um, in Europe who wouldn't be awake at this point, and we'd say, you know, can my website, can you log into my website and perform these actions in, you know, Romania? Right. Mm. You can't really do that with people because people need to like sleep and stuff. Whereas with this automation Just stuff, that. we can have that ticking around the clock. So you can know like any time of day and uh, as well as on demand. So if you suspect something's wrong, you don't have to wait. You can also uh, run additional on demand tests. So mm. that's why like automation is kind of nice. Um, mm. But definitely there's space for, you know, non automated stuff as well. That's very cool to hear. And uh, maybe one last question is like, are you making money for all yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, one of the problems Bitcoin businesses often have is, you know, most of their income comes from uh, your know, venture funding and other investments. And uh, very few yeah. of them are actually turning a profit or, you know, making an income from their business. Yeah, I mean... And that's that's a real problem with uh, focusing just on the internal economy. Um, if you thought of Bitcoin as like a country and, you know, Satoshis were the national currency um, and all you did was move Satoshis around, then really all you like all, all you have is like a tax farm, right? Like miners are the <laughs> ones collecting taxes in the form of fees, right? Yeah. It's like a it's a consumption tax. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all that happens is the money just goes up to the miners. Right. And yeah. that's the same like as, uh, as like a government taxation model. Well, if you have exports, instead of the money just like floating to the top, what happens is money pours into the country and, you know, um, into new new industries and new businesses and stuff like that. Um, and so what we really need is to think of Bitcoin like a national economy and think of how can we export services. Um, so, you know, like the, the vast majority of our income doesn't come from people in Bitcoin or people who even care or know what Bitcoin is, right? Mm. It comes from us exporting services to people who need the utility that our application provides. And we just use Bitcoin as a settlement layer so that we can um, pay people anywhere around the world, you know, fractions of a cent for mm. these actions that, you know, they wouldn't do it for free, but it's not worth like a credit card fee to pay them. Yeah, mm. exactly. And it's also a, a quite a benefit in my eyes um, a lot of these people not necessarily needing to know that it's Bitcoin that powers these services, just like how when you go to YouTube or, you know, Twitch or whatever, you don't need to know anything about HTTP or TCP or how the data flows around. It just it just works. And provided people get what they're what they're you know going to the website to do or getting paid for what they were asked to do, uh, it it shouldn't really matter. Uh, so I think I think that's really cool like uh and it's it's actually interesting because we're still living in sort of like a uh an in-between time where people are still skeptical about cryptocurrencies like i know uh, I, I worked for quite a while in like the legal tech space and a lot of legal tech people don't even want to they're, they're too oh sorry a lot of legal people don't even want to know about it it's it's like too out of their comfort zone so if they don't need to think about it they don't, you know, it, it's not a problem. It's just another business that they interact with. So, and it's a, it's a really good onboarding tool for, um, uh, for providing people who might have heard about Bitcoin SV but don't know how to get any bit, bit, uh, Bitcoin SV to start interacting with the rest of the Bitcoin ecosystem. Yeah, I'd recommend anyone who's looking to earn a few cents of, uh, well, cents or dollars, depending on how long they're on, uh, of BSV, and they don't have any yet, just uh, join, uh, join Bitping as a node and. Started it's constantly going to be going up so yeah yeah it's very cool all right well well, well put guys and uh, thank you very much once again for coming on i'll let yeah, you thank get, you for having us i'll let Thanks you get back us. to the, the barbies and the fireworks and the <laughs> that glorious summer that i wish i was enjoying now <laughs> swing by any time there's always a beer in the fridge for you nice all right then. well thanks uh thanks dean and nick from bitping for coming on you can find them at bitping.com and uh, we'll see you all again next time. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. <laughs>